So far on our Madagascar expedition, we found some of the coolest reptiles that are native to Madagascar, and we've also looked into how Europlatus geckos are living in the wild, as well as Madagascar's boas. And in this video, we're going to look into how satanic leaf-tailed geckos are living in the wild, see what their habitat is like, and learn a little bit about their natural history. So let's go explore the rainforests of Madagascar and look into how satanic leaf-tailed geckos are living out here in the wild so that we better know how to care for them in our homes. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So this is the habitat of leaf-tailed geckos, specifically the satanic leaf-tailed gecko. We are on the top of a mountain right now, and it is at these elevations that you can find satanic leaf-tailed geckos. They prefer much cooler temperatures than other geckos. And even though I'm in a tropical rainforest here in Madagascar, it is actually really almost chilly up here. As we hiked for miles into this incredible rainforest looking for our first satanic leaf-tailed gecko, we saw other geckos like this line day gecko, which proved to be the most common day gecko we saw. And then, a few hours later, hiding behind a dead leaf, there he was, the number one gecko on my target list for Madagascar. And once we saw it, we were amazed at just what masters of camouflage they really are. So here he is, look at this. this is a satanic leaf-tailed gecko, Europlatus fantasticus, and this is fantastic. This is a male, and the way that we know that this is a male is that there is sexual dimorphism in fantasticus, and it's all about that tail right there. So males have a tail that looks like it's been predated by insects, you see that jagged outline to the tail? And females will have a tail that doesn't have those jagged lines on it. So the female's tail basically looks like an uneaten tail. The male's tail looks like it's a leaf that has been eaten. And that is one of the ways to tell males from female. It's all in that tail. And if you look carefully, everything about this gecko allows it to completely disappear in plain sight, right down to the color and texture of the body that makes it look exactly like a dead leaf. These make incredible vivarium specimens, and these are sought after by a lot of gecko enthusiasts. Now, if you look at those eyes, they have little horns right above their eyes that go backwards. They look like little, well, Satan horns, and that's where this guy gets his name, Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko. So if you talk to a lot of people that are working with satanic leaf-tailed geckos and breeding them, they will tell you to not keep them warm, but to keep them on the cool side. So I'm going to take some temperature and humidity readings right here in this gecko's habitat to see what the optimal temperature and the optimal humidity is for these satanic leaf-tailed geckos. So when it comes to ambient temperature and humidity for satanic leaf-tailed geckos, I'm just gonna stick my probe right in that tree, let it cook and calibrate for just a second. And in a minute here, we'll see what the optimal humidity and ambient temperature is for satanic leaf-tailed geckos. And we're gonna do that right after this. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. All right, so I've let that cook for and calibrate for a couple of minutes, and look at that, 23.9 degrees Celsius, which is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So even though I'm in the middle of a tropical rainforest, look at those temperatures. It is a really cool ambient temperature in this rainforest, but pay close attention to how high that humidity is. It's almost 90% humidity. All right, so that guy was up in this tree about maybe six feet up. So let's grab a surface temperature of this tree and look at that. It's 73 degrees surface temperature on this tree, which matches about the ambient temperature. So 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 degrees Celsius, right where that gecko was hanging out. So if you're keeping satanic leaf-tailed geckos at home or if you're thinking about beginning to work with them, the trick is to keep them on the cool side, but keep that humidity around 90%. And that's gonna be pretty difficult to do because when you have lower temperatures, 
keeping that humidity that high is going to be really tricky. So I would suggest getting a mister, and if you can't get a mister to increase that humidity to almost 90% within the Satanic Leaftail Gecko's enclosure, then you have to mist them down several times a day with a manual mister to keep that humidity up to 90%. And make sure that the ambient temperature within your enclosure stays around 75 degrees. That is one of the reasons why keeping satanic leaftail geckos is so tricky. It's because those lower temperatures and those high humidities and trying to replicate that in their enclosure, again, it's gonna be kind of tricky. So let's talk a little bit about caging for satanic leaf-tailed geckos. Obviously, leaf-tailed geckos are arboreal or semi-arboreal. They spend the majority of their life in trees. So we are finding these satanic leaf-tailed geckos about six to eight feet up in the trees. So you want a large vertical enclosure for your satanic leaf-tailed geckos. So a really good enclosure for satanic leaf-tailed geckos is a Zilla front opening enclosure. They come with a plastic piece that covers up the top screen and I would suggest using that to hold in that high humidity. If you have an open screen enclosure for satanic leaf tail geckos, yes it's going to keep them cooler, it's going to keep them at those optimal temperatures, but what it's going to do is it's not going to hold in that high humidity that satanic leaf tail geckos need. But right now I'm going to further walk around the satanic leaf tail geckos habitat here in Madagascar and show you guys some of the plants that are here so that you guys can make the most authentic enclosures for your satanic leaf tail geckos at home. So let's take a look at the ground, the substrate here in Madagascar. It's basically the same as you will find anywhere else on earth. You've got a top layer of moist leaves and underneath you've got really hard packed soil that really holds in that moisture. So for substrate in your enclosure, use any material that will remain moist to hold in that humidity in that enclosure and then you can use decorative dead leaves over the topsoil to really create a natural and aesthetic look to your enclosures at home. So some of the ground plants that are here in this habitat is these ferns are everywhere. So look at this. This is small grass bamboo and this is in the bamboo family and this is actually full grown bamboo. And this could be really interesting to put in your enclosure with satanic leaf-tailed geckos or other leaf-tailed geckos. It doesn't get any bigger than this. And look at this, it just kind of blankets the entire ground here. Very cool plant to put in your terrarium. And also, gingers are found all over the world. This is a really big ginger. I really like ginger in enclosures. They do get big, they will outgrow your enclosure. But I love how ginger has these big broad leaves like this. But if you notice, look at the tree trunks here. Every one of them is covered with moss. And there's a lot of decorative moss that you can get for your enclosures. So if you get a hollow piece of cork bark, make sure to decorate it with all of this moss. And what that moss will do is when you mist your enclosure down, that moss will retain water droplets, which will further help to increase the humidity in your enclosure. All right, so we made it to the eastern side of Madagascar, and this is another primary rainforest. Here again on the eastern side, look at this bridge, this is awesome. But it's in here that I expect to see more Europlatus fantasticus, the satanic leaf-tailed geckos, but there are also other species of Europlatus geckos that call this forest home. We're probably not gonna see those till tonight, but if we've got our eagle eyes on in here, we might see another satanic leaf-tailed gecko in here. Man, I don't know about you guys, but after being here in their environment, feeling how cool it is in here, but really humid, it's giving me a lot of ideas on how to better care for satanic leaf tails. And I think when I get back, I'm gonna need to look into getting one, two, let's be honest, 50. Right now, we are in a primary rainforest, one of the final remaining rainforests here in Madagascar. And, and satanic leaf tail geckos, they're found here as well. And right here in this shot 
is a satanic leaf-tailed gecko. Can you guys see it? It's right here, hiding behind this leaf. And as we walked by, everybody walked by this and missed it. And that's a testament to just how well these guys blend into their surroundings. Every single person that I'm on this expedition with walked past this, but I was the one who actually found it sitting right here by this leaf. And that is 100% not true. Nadim actually found this one. And the fact that she blends in so well, there could be 50 of them in this area, we'd never even know they were here. These are masters at camouflage. And you can see by the tail that this one is actually female. And again, this illustrates just how well these guys blend into their surroundings. Look at the way her entire body has ridges on it with that lateral line down her back to make her look exactly like a dead leaf. The thing about satanic leaf tail geckos is that they're super adorable and uh, I'm just gonna do fake smiles for this whole thing. And also those horns on their head, that is for uh, jousting other males so that they can just ramrod them right in their bee holes. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Nice. Cutting. All right, so look at this in the satanic leaf-tailed gecko's environment. You've got all these groups of dead brown leaves hanging here. And so in your enclosure, when you create vines for them to climb on, you can add a hide box and plenty of places to hide to make your gecko feel secure. But what they actually do is they'll hide behind leaves like this and use their camouflage to blend into those leaves and it's in these hanging leaves that they're gonna feel most secure and most confident. So when you design your enclosures with hanging vines, make sure to glue a bunch of commercially available leaves like this on that vine so it gives them plenty of places to hide and feel secure within their enclosures. So guys, we've been walking around this forest for about four or five hours right now after we found that satanic leaf-tailed gecko this morning. We're on our way back, and look who's still hanging out exactly where we left her. So I released her right there on that group of leaves, and all she's done is crawl down here. And that's the furthest she's moved in four or five hours. But it is the daytime, these guys are primarily nocturnal, so it doesn't surprise me that she's that far away from where I released her five hours ago. Diane and Mike, does that surprise you that this gecko is right where we left her five hours ago? What are your thoughts on that? Not really, but also with the sun, like there's open canopy kind of right above us. So it does surprise me a little bit with temperatures and such, but hey, yeah. clearly it works. <laughs> I mean, they're sleeping throughout the whole day. So set her back in a good spot again and she's happy and content to slumber away. That's probably where she's spending the majority of her day, right behind those leaves and yeah. with a few inches away from it. All right, so Mike is gonna take some temperature readings here. 71. 71 and degrees Fahrenheit. 71. 71. And it was about 70% humidity. 70% humidity. So really high humidity, re relatively cooler temperatures for being a tropical rainforest. Yeah. So this is Dion Salani from Reptiliatus. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who he is. If you don't, his link is in the description below. Check him out. So Dion, you have quite an extensive knowledge of breeding and caging and caring for satanic leaf-tailed geckos. Can you share with us a little bit about breeding satanic leaf-tailed geckos? I mean, for starters, I would say, uh, you know, ensuring that you have healthy, ideally captive bred adult animals. They're fairly straightforward. You can easily house males and females together. The males aren't very aggressive or territorial. Most people that keep and produce them actually keep their males and females together all year round. Over time, you're gonna start finding fertile clutches from your females and they just do very well. Uh, if anything, I would say this trip has shown me that perhaps the enclosure sizes for the sake of the animals could be the standard could be uh, that they, they should be larger because we're finding most of these animals at around six feet uh, or maybe even a bit higher is where they're perching and, and spending their time. Whereas I would say the hobby standard is sort of like a 12 by 12 by 18 inch enclosure dimension. It works, but I think that it could be more rewarding not only for the animals, but for us to see the full scope of 
what kind of behavior and perching styles you might observe from the animals that way and then perhaps it opens a door to different nesting spots and other things as well. They're not a particularly active species in my opinion. I find they do a lot of perching and they hone in on something moving and go for it or even wait around till it's close. I think for me the most rewarding thing about this experience has been seeing the parameters in action. Like we've done this hike, we made it up all the way up to like up the hill and the location that we're finding these animals has that high level of humidity but the temperature at that elevation is significantly lower so right away you understand why these animals need to be kept cooler but it, there's also it is it is hot in the light so the thing i'm taking home from this is like these animals need the cooler temperatures but they need good airflow it's like finding this sweet balance of the days can be a bit warmer, the nights need to be cool, they need high humidity but good airflow. Exactly. So if you can go about you know, making that happen, whether it's using some foggers, maybe a few computer fans, combination of heavy misting but substrate that drains well, lots of leaf litter. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas I want to take back to the community. It's It's been pretty cool to, to really get that full scope and we're taking lots of measurements and everything. I know Dave, you yep. are as well. So. Well, that's, our best to help. That's, that's what I love about doing these videos mm -hmm. is that it adds to our knowledge base as well as those who are watching this video. I've yeah. learned more about satanic leaftail geckos in a few days out here mm -hmm. than you can learn in a few years just keeping them. Absolutely. I hope that this video added to your knowledge base of satanic leaftail geckos. They are one of the most unique and rewarding and interesting geckos that you can work with and it's my prediction that as our knowledge continues to grow about this species and as the species becomes more readily available they are really going to give crested geckos and gargoyle geckos a run for their money and popularity. And as always with the In the Wild video series leave a comment below with a tip or a technique on how you're keeping satanic leaftail geckos so that others can learn from you as well. And until the next reptile adventure from here in Madagascar, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. <laughs>